Hello, everybody. Welcome back to your favorite military news show. This week, we have some interesting news stories regarding my beloved Army, as well as the Air Force's clarification to an age-old military question. What can I get away with looking like? <laughs> so get ready, because we're about to inform you so freaking hard on this week's episode of The Debrief. Starting us off, the U.S. Army is doing away with 24,000 troops, or almost a whopping 5% of its personnel. Why, you ask? Well, there are numerous reasons, but the biggest being the obvious failure to meet recruiting numbers, and then the Army's reason, that is, the restructuring that needs to be done in order to meet the needs of future wars. If you're active duty army and watching this, do not be afraid. These cuts are said to be spaces and not faces, meaning that the army is cutting already vacant positions within. Now, these cuts are targeted primarily at positions dealing with counterinsurgency and counterterrorism as future conflicts are guesstimated. <laughs> They're guesstimated to be with foes more advanced than dudes in flip flops living in caves. So if you're scared that you're going to lose your job, you probably aren't and you're good to go. Now, here's the Army's shaving plan, according to ABC News. We have 3,000 troops from the Special Operations Forces, which hurts my heart, 10,000 spaces from engineers and similar jobs that were tied to the counterinsurgency missions. We have 2,700 cuts from units that do not deploy often, which is, I'm kind of okay with that because <laughs> they're not doing their job anyways. 6,500 cuts from various training and other posts, so like schools and other courses of that nature. 10,000 will come from cavalry squadrons, striker brigade combat teams, infantry brigade combat teams, and security forces assistant brigades, which are used primarily to train uh, foreign forces. Now, those numbers don't really seem to add up to 24,000. It might be a uh, a bit more than that, but who am I? I'm just a guy that went to college. My two cents on this whole matter, I do see the necessity for these cuts. I mean, there are thousands of empty positions within the ranks uh, since I was in, and if they don't need to be there, why should they stay? As they, as long as they aren't removing good soldiers from great positions that are quite honestly extremely helpful. So in addition, the word around town is that they will be adding 7,500 new positions specialized in air defense, counter drone, and five new task force with enhanced cyber intelligence and long range strike capabilities. If I had to make a recommendation for a part of the army that needs to be cut, eh, it's going to be the airborne. And sorry if that might hurt some feelings. I'm part of the airborne, but airborne operations are a thing of the past. They go again. If we're versing a conventional force, uh, good luck not getting shot down miles from the drop zone. I mean, they have amazing history, uh, but that's exactly what it should be. Uh, my airborne guys, sadly, you know this is true. So sorry to ruffle any jimmies. Moving right along, the army is back again and allegedly going all in whatever that means on food kiosks as base dining facilities are struggling. I feel like base dining facilities have always been struggling. Even normal folks have probably heard the horrors of the military chow hall. You know, I must be completely transparent with y'all because in my experience, I had the luxury of having one of the best chow halls in the military. And that was at second range battalion because it was strictly for Rangers. But that doesn't mean I didn't have to suffer anytime I went somewhere else besides that chow hall. So. There goes my chow hall privilege. Food kiosks must be a new thing because uh, these weren't around when I was in. Uh, these kind of sound like those snack stands that you pass by at the airports that sell you an $18 sandwich uh, that are never good or hit the spot. Ugh, bad idea. Senses are tingling. I don't think the army should be going 
all in into snack bars instead of ramping up some sort of rehabilitation program for their current dining facilities. When dining facilities are done right, like in my experience, they are truly amazing and a great treat for soldiers. But when they're done wrong and they're ignored, that's when we start to see TikTok and Instagram reels start coming out showing raw chicken, right? I have some ideas that our soldiers might enjoy. How about giving soldiers who want their basic allowance for subsidence and let them eat their own food and choose in grocery shop for their own instead of forcing them to eat at chow halls that are considered booty? Now, this obviously comes with allowing them to also be able to cook inside of their rooms. And I know that's really scary to leadership and it's hard to wrap your mind around, although you let them operate and maintain millions of dollars worth of equipment. It does bother me because in the article by military.com, they had mentioned playing around with the idea of giving soldiers a meal card that would allow them to go off base and eat at normal restaurants. And you know, that could actually be a really good idea, but of course, that plan never made any progress. And like I said, I'm just a dude who complains and went to college. Finally, are you in the Air Force and not sure whether your new hairstyle is in standard? Well, in the past, you could probably get away with it because doctrine has always been pretty vague about what is considered or indicates a risque haircut. The Air Force has updated their dress and appearance standards to include new visual aids just in case you really needed to know what was unauthorized. Now, taking a look at some of these photos, they are honestly comical. They're comedy gold, especially the female haircuts. And uh, I am sure glad that Karen haircuts and super long bangs are banned in our Air Force because they should be banned in real life. <laughs> and for our men, unfortunately, combat mohawks with a fade are still not an authorized style. But maybe next year, hopefully. In addition to hairstyles, you have a guide on eyelash length and nail polish color. Sorry, ladies, I know there's unbelievable beauty standards nowadays, but you won't be able to glue fans on the end of your eyelashes anymore. We need you to be able to see what you're doing when you're at work in the military. Also, the Air Force is allowing hand and neck tattoos in an effort to keep and retain recruit talent uh, within their ranks, which honestly I think is super cool. Uh, I think as time goes on, the military, uh, they're going to need to recruit a younger generation. So we're going to start seeing more relaxed grooming standards in order to appeal to that younger generation. And that is not cap. But good on the Air Force for making things easier on their airmen to make sure that they are in standards. Long gone are the days that you are not sure whether you will get in trouble for your new half brunette, half bleach blonde hairstyle. Well, folks, that is going to do it for this week's episode of The Debrief. If you enjoyed watching it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the PCFM podcast here on YouTube. Let me know in the comment section what you thought about our news today. And don't forget to check out our other content like the first formation with Izzy, as well as the video versions of the PCFM podcast. My name is Cameron Fath. As always, folks, it has been a pleasure sharing some military news with you, and I will see you on next week's episode of The Debrief.